Last week we saw the weather uh, quite different from today. Um, when we were coming, when those of us were driving, uh, we could look, look from left and right and you see every place had been much white with the snow. Um, during the week, uh, we did have a lot of slippery movements um, because of the snow getting iced. Uh, we woke up this morning and we all know. Not uh, any public provision of land. So this is testimony enough for us to know that there is an all-powerful God that as we do all that we could by spreading salt and sun and using machine to clear the way which are all measured in human effort, do not end up with what we are seeing today. By himself just blowing one wind <laughs> over the surface and made void for our salt or our um, sand or our tractors, made, up, made all of them useless just within a, a second. And they should tell us to continue to trust in God. That there could be slippery roads in our lives. Our lives could be getting icy. We'll be looking for more hands to get them drained aside. But it takes God for a moment to clear the way for us. Let's keep trusting in yeah. God. For He's ever faithful. Amen. 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 I'm <laughs> The older I get, as my years come by, the more often I wonder the kind of mark I'm making and have made with my life and this earth. <laughs> And now, my dear, and fans will tell me, what do you have to do? I will be asking, you know, uh, Mark Benny and Coupon, and the mommy was, uh, what do you have to do? When I am dead and gone, which will definitely come to pass one day, what will the world remember me of? To remember, ah, make a many, I can mention, ah, many of you are sitting in the what difference did my life make when I'm gone? I And today's, today, most especially, the church is locating this message to the world. We have a cause and a great one to serve the Lord. Amen. Find a horse, say to me, I'll say to me, Sumi, I'll go for a year. And we cannot risk being casual when it comes to our master's work. Hey, to me, I'm here, 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 I'm Each one of us has a divine role to play, and God expects us to perform it. I'm here, 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 I
And God knows what we can do, and no one can do that for you. That is why God brought you to work. So this knowledge that I have a responsibility as a woman of God, as a daughter of God, as a mother of God, we must increase our zealousness to do something for the Lord. The Bible is full of description of females in, the, in, in, in his word. Only today we hear about and it is all feminism or it is all women's rights. Those are strange words to the knowledge of God. <laughs> what we read about the Bible is we found daughters, we found wives, we found mothers, we found grandmothers. <laughs> And this is how God wants to see a female. At every stage in a female's life, God wants to see you as a daughter, God wants to see you as a wife, God wants to see you as a mother, and God wants to see you as a grandmother. This categorization has a purpose and God expects special responsibilities from these faces in our lives. We are looking as a church, let us rise up and build for the year. And I want to today talk about shall we build without the women? <laughs> In everything that the church wants to do, can we or shall we do or build without the women? But today we want to uh, ask the program is to look into our building enterprise as we want to initiate this year for the church. And it will involve each one of us. But we want today to specially recognize the importance of women in this particular task. We know as a child of God, we need to have a goal, and we need to serve that goal, and we need to bring that goal to accomplishment. And if this is a set goal for every member of the church, or every child of God, can we exclude the woman from this. <laughs> Going back to our team, the background of our team, which is from the MI, we uh, learn about a man called Nehemiah serving in the palace of the king in Babylon who had a vision and who had the desire to go and rebuild the broken walls of Jerusalem. We saw from this encounter that there was a need for something to do for the laws. And this involved man to engage in something to please God. Nehemiah got the permission, went and performed this task within the shortest possible time. Now, 
did he accomplish this without women? Did he accomplish this without daughters? Did he accomplish this without mothers? Did he accomplish this without wives? Shall we build without women? The answer is no. They were particularly important and they performed the exclusive role in building out the walls of Jerusalem. Because when Nehemiah came to the people from the beginning, in Nehemiah 2.17, the Bible reads, Then said I unto them, You see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lie waste, and the gates thereof are bent with fire. Come and let us build up the walls of Jerusalem, that we be no more reproach. 18. Then I told them of the hand of the Lord, which was good upon me, as also the king's words that he has spoken unto me. And they said, let us rise up and bear. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. 28. And the rest, 1028, and the rest of the people, the priests, the Levites, the porters, the singers, the litanies, and all they that had separated themselves from the people of the lands unto the law of God, their wives, their sons and their daughters, everyone having knowledge and having understanding. Verse number 30 of chapter 10. And that we will not give our daughters unto the people of the land, nor take their daughters for our sons. Amen. 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 This is a particular, is in particular reference to how the construction work for the building or the putting up of the wall was occasion or happened. And we see that when Nehemiah came, he addressed the whole congregation of Israel, including the women, including the daughters, including the wives, and including the mothers. And then he proved to them how strong the hands of God was upon him, and how strong the hands of God was upon the king that he said. And so let us all rise up and build. Now the Bible said the people with one accord all responded that we shall rise up and build. That's from chapter 2. So we saw from chapter 10, as I read, that it encompassed many different types of people. <coughs> whether it be priests, whether it be merchants, or whether be any other form of profession that any of them belong to. And more especially, he said, for everyone who had the knowledge, for everyone who had the understanding, got engaged in completing the building of the world. So if today we can have an understanding, if today we can have the knowledge, that we need to build, then we cannot build without women. For those who have that knowledge, for those who have that understanding, included wives, included daughters, in fact, it included women. Bruh, when crying about Nehemiah, no who said, I'm not son, I'll say I'm missing Jerusalem at first one. A boy in a hook up a home pie, no, I'll say to me if you are here in the world. Or here is the man, if you or catch a number for the set, say in a essay or say, see Jerusalem a person. So Munina, a boom, or bra, a marrow, and a mammy for any marina, and come or bra, which may tell you as a person. Women, listen to me for a moment now. Historically, God in his every Work they are giving to man. Woman has been very instrumental 
making it a success or making it a failure. In your number, Santa Cram or a can I say, if you are a young couple, they are shared other Sansa, a Berman Sasa on him. In your number, a war, Chef, a woman be brave, Sansa, or Mutam, the man eating me a dinner. And whether it is not going to pass the test will also depend on the woman. Say, a bit me, a real media, in your number, no, a can hope. But today we are not talking about not building, we are talking about building. And therefore we are looking to the positiveness of our contribution as a woman to the task of God. Let's see some historical evidences. When he came to a lady called Mary, we all knew how he gave up herself by comfort to become the lone security officer. Not knowing that God is going to use her to protect the mighty leader of God's people in the future. Yeah, I'm not and yet to protect the baby Moses in the basket in the waters. We always read this, but I want us today to see it was a river. And at that time, a river, and even now, cannot be located at home. The river is in the bush. It's not in the wilds. And so daily taking care and concern over that was a human's job. In Isaiah chapter 35, when it came to a thunder, Moses was to raise up the first tabernacle of God. <laughs> Remember what the woman did from verse numbers 20 to 29. And the Bible said they gave us the frigate. <laughs> <laughs> we saw the generosity of the woman when he came to the tabernacle building of God, the exact meeting place of God, for God's people. And you know what they did? They came out with their own armies. They came out with all their golden jewels. They came out with everything that their hands can lay on that is of value. And I want to tell you the first tabernacle that was built by Moses in Exodus chapter 35 had a composition of women's contribution. Why should I say at this time about the lady Abigail, the Nabal's wife, who proved to shine an example in saving his household from the imminent danger. When the husband, full of deceit and cheat, David and his men over 300, 
have taken care to protect his sheep from the terrorists, from the invaders. And when it comes to at the end of time, such people protect you and protect your sheep who have a share in the profit that you claim. And when it got to a time that David was going to collect the share, this man said, no, I never knew you. David and 300 men was about, they were about to besiege and destroy the home of Nabal. Immediately, we saw the inspiration and intervention of Abigail. The Bible said, the story goes on, that she was able to be on her knees and to seek mercy <coughs> from David and his men. Lay a table for them. And he calls his house to be saved from destruction. Yeah, they are in here, but I'll be here to see you in front of one. His advanced wisdom and vision was enough to compliment David to become a king and to successful king. Thus, a heroic role played by a woman, and the Bible didn't mention the name, and I'm talking about the Shinamite woman. Taking that come from Second King chapter four from verse number stage. And we see this woman who saw the prophet of God, who was by that time an evangelist, moving from towns and towns, and always passing by, seeing the man in dust, walking on the desert many days without bath, seeing the man where he dressed, was walking, looking so tired, this was a woman that was not rich. This was a woman that was of any particular skills. This was a woman that was strikingly beautiful as we may describe Sarah, Bathsheba or Esther. This is a woman who has not served his people like we may refer to Esther. This is a woman who has not led her, her, her people, like I'll be talking of, about devil. This is a woman who has not gone to evangelize <laughs> to this community who have not heard the gospel, but a Samaritan woman. This was a woman who had never, or who was not even a judge over the people of Israel. This was a woman who didn't have a child who was going to become a good person. But Hannah, or oh, Jacobet. But this is a woman who saw herself enough. In that poor home, seeing the work of God being done by the man of God, was able to offer her only home an accommodation sustain the work of the prophet. <laughs> Et tu m'as mis à la bébé et je me dis à toi.
Oh, hey, she has even got a name, the Bible for the English. Yeah. I'm going to but I know one day in eternity when all true good works are manifested, we shall see that. Amen. When I want to talk about Hannah. First someone one. From verse 1 to 19. And when I was reading this passage, what came to my mind is how we enter the house of the Lord. We have a lot to do how we accept. How we go into the house of the Lord has something to do when we are leaving the house of the Lord. Women take notice of this. She went to the house of the Lord with promises. And she left with a heart fulfilled. Of her when we can come to the house of the Lord, having in mind something to give to the Lord, we will leave the house of the Lord with something in our hands as we want. But I want to remember that when we go in with something in our hands to give to the Lord, we will definitely also come out with what God has given to us in our hands. When you come to Esther, Esther chapter 4, from verse 13, who may there's any other time, when Esther was procrastinating, delaying, not trying to get to the grips of the reality at that time. No, 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 bra. You know about Esther. No, all three can and I say. No, bra, I can bring us to know. So, you've been in all three can and I say. Her uncle, Mordecai, upon persuasion, upon persuasion. Now, in a moment when it pricked, the heart of Esther, this is what she said, for such a time as this. If women today can rise up and say for such a time as this, we will be able to influence and do mighty things for them. It was a time that cried out for a good woman of courage. No, Emma Esther, it made a good group. The silence of Sir, uh, Sir um, Esther <coughs> will render herself to be insane because of the responsible position that he was. It was a time that she was needed by God's people. Samra, no, no, I do not know. Esther, baby, I tell you, a woman, no, I know, to me, Abua, Ma, Israel, for a time It was a time true in her time. It was a time that was true also and can be true in our time as well. Some reno it may be to say a name race to our now reno also said in your own man so or to me to be sir. With this few historical examples I have given, when I'm talking about mirror, I'm talking about the offer of our time, I'm veiling ourselves so that something good can come out of what we are doing for the Lord. And by talking about Isaiah 35, when the woman provided freely their gift for the burden of the tabernacle, I'm talking about your self -tense. It's not a matter of now I'm looking forward when I become rich, but what you have when you are prepared to share for the work of God, that is what will let you also be mentioned as someone who has also supported the work of the kingdom. For so look at the people who are in the wilderness. They are not there no way. Even if 
for them to eat, God has to rain manna for them. But these are the people they were able with the little they have to share so they can build a temple for the Lord. Some somebody didn't put it in the And the reason why all the attention went to women is that because in the woman, if you ask me the man, maybe he does get me in their shoe the way it is saddled. You cannot use it for anything, but you have anything at all. You can have the urine here, you can have wine here, you can have wine here, and even the bees on them were so precious that it can be used for useful things for the kingdom of God. And it's still even now. When it comes to Abigail, I said I gave an example of Abigail. How do we provide excellent evidence of wisdom to support and to move our family forward? When I'm talking about a Shinama woman, then I'm talking about you and I, not complaining of what we are not having, but sharing what you have. We might be saying that when we come to Christianity, more often than not, the Bible talks about limitations about the roles of a uh, woman in the church. But I want to say that role, in terms of limitation, was even more vigorous in the Old Testament, but here are people whose names comes out tall when it comes to supporting the work of God. Shall we go without the women? No. In the New Testament, this is what we hold. We see the feet of Jesus anointed by woman and the hair of Jesus anointed by woman. And then we see a little cold matter not knowing with little research I got to know why when Jesus went to visit uh, Mary and Martha. And for that particular time, we recognized that Martha was at the kitchen. It was her major role in supporting the disciples. It wasn't only on that occasion. That was all that she was doing. So she thought she was doing one of the things that she was regularly doing in supporting the ministry of Christ. Martha was always providing meals. Why did you hear the apostles or the disciples going to canteen, going to restaurant, going to eat somebody's house? But it was always preaching, preaching, preaching. How can I be preaching, preaching, preaching without anything? Not knowing there were women behind them who were providing the meal. Shall we go with that woman? No. Yeah, no. I don't know. I say, I'm Now, say, if you're Martha and Mary, then be another Martha, she jarry. Now, tell me, I just say, if you have for no more cancer, for no more cancer, for no more you'll be at them, be a way jarry, and then they bring no more cancer, for no when you look at Luke chapter 8, there are women who supported Jesus financially. I'm not talking about food. Financially, they put money inside Jesus' pocket. They put money inside Jesus' pocket in order to move around. <laughs> Luke chapter 8, verse number 3. They call Luke a woman and it's in what they into the moon and sun. And certain women who have been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, out of whom had come seven demons, that's number three, and Joanna, the wife of Cusa, Herod's steward, 
and Susanna, and many others who provided for him from their substance. So we hear of the names of Mary Magdalene, we hear of Joanna, we hear of Susanna, we hear of Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and we hear of Salome. You should be thinking about the woman who followed and labored right alongside of Jesus and the disciples. I'm not saying they all have the same level of ministry or the same type of ministries to perform, but each had places of service in the ministry. Even when the body of Jesus Christ was in the tomb, <coughs> we found women who cared so much to put spices to preserve the body. Matthew 27, verse number 55. And many women were there beholding afar off. You see, because they, they may not be necessarily be in the front, but they were afar off. That is what the Bible is saying in Matthew 27, 55. Which followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering unto him. That is providing substance. To him, but they were afar off. We cannot go without them, whatever that we want to find ourselves. Yes, I'm way in the animal for, but no more how much he, 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 how who, when the disciples were arrested and were in prison, sentenced to be killed, and that could measure the, the danger or the level of persecution that was going on. But this woman was bold enough to say, take my home and come and meet. Could you just imagine and reckon the risk that is involved? But this was a woman. Maybe, I might be wrong, there could be some men with wonderful houses, but I won't let you come in and let Saul and others follow you and come and destroy my house. We have all witnessed the head of James gone. And you all of you, so many of you to in my house. And not only to keep quiet, but what they were doing was they were what? Praying. But we found a woman. The mother of John Mark. You could be also the mother of John Martin. So we go with that woman? The last person I will mention the name before I leave here is about the woman calling me. It's not only when you are poor, then you use only the few things that you have. When you are also rich, God demands for your richness. And this woman is a shining example of when you are well to do. Woman. She was a woman who was dealing with purple. It was the high class of trade business that you could engage in. And in such a business, you deal with the richest people in the society and the most influential people in the society. So you can see the class of people that this woman belongs to. 
And you are from a place called Theatra in Philippi. And by that time, because of the persecution, the gates of the Philippi city was closed. And then there was a law that nobody should preach in that particular city. This woman was able, if you not allow me within him, I will come out. And the Bible says, she came not as, as the rich person, she came not as the woman that one knows as selling the purple, but she came as one of the women outside the gate to gather and pray. Even though Jesus Christ has said, it is difficult for the rich man to go to heaven, not for this woman. Women, you can rise up and in your by editor, and also a brother, Sam Rasa, Mobia, and Kang, and Sam Walker, and Kronu. If you Kronu, I'm going to see a can, and Sam, a chair, a man for Nessa, if you ask any one, a bit, a Babuka, and the ultimate for heaven. He took courage and steadfastness to open the house to this man of God. When we were here, you don't forget that is the time that Paul and Silas were put in prison. And I want you to understand the situation at that time. And Paul's ministry, the Christian effort over there, was all initiated or built upon this particular woman called Lydia. And in fact, she was the first convert in that Gentile world. And he took his sacrifice, her sacrifice, he took her steadfastness, he took her courageousness. And when it comes to material things, you may say because you're rich. Yes, but she gave out a whole home. Take it and make it a chapel. Like as we are now gathering pieces here and there to look for a building, she just said, just take the whole house and make it a chapel and make it a meeting place. Use it. Her house was the church of Philip. The house where, where Paul goes all around to come in and so the house became the hostel for and his entourage who come and take their rest in the midst of all the Christian persecution that was going around. Lydia is all that she got. And as I said earlier, if it was difficult for rich man to go to heaven. This is a rich woman. Rich woman. And the Bible is today talking about her goodness. In your leader, Lydia, and the fear is here. And I saw the year to watch it. And my and call for a mobile cell mobile campus and panel. And the idea was to be a boy. So the door for ministry in Europe was open through the effort of Lydia. In Philippians 4 3, Paul described women as co laborers in the ministry of Christ. And I entreat thee also, true young fellow, have those women which labored with me in the gospel. We cannot go without. That is not what we have in the Bible. So as we are about to start engaging ourselves in building what preparation, what mindset, what right spirits are we having? Women. So that in Romans chapter 16 from verse number 1, when Paul is sending the salutation, Christian salutations, when the spirit is moving around with some special names of service, your name, Christy, Jane, Martha, 
Amen. 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 And Paul said, and from 16 verse number 1, when you continue to read, names like Phoebe, I want us to read, because all more often than not, only the verse 16 is what we like most. But for my concern today, I want us to read from a bit earlier. You know Romans 16, 16, all churches of Christ are with you. See the names mentioned there before the child of Christ's name was mentioned. And you can recognize the contribution of women to the church. In Romans chapter 16, reading from verse number 1. He began straight away from, I command to you, Phoebe. Is Phoebe a man? No. <laughs> the Bible answers it. Phoebe, our what? Our sister. You are sitting there, you are my sister. You have a part to play in building the church. You have a part to play. In everything that we set our hands to do at church. Who is a servant of the church in sanctuary? That you may receive her in the Lord in a manner worthy of sins. Something has been provided. Women. I'm talking about a New Testament church woman. When you want to go to another place, can the church write this? That sister, my son, sister Mary, sister Queer is coming. But this is what we are writing. Please receive a worthy of manner that the faith saint. <laughs> Verse number three. Greet prisoner and Aquila. Are they men? No. Thank you. <coughs> Shall we go with that woman? And then this is what he said, Paul said about Priscilla and Aquila. My fellow workers, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus. Verse number four, continue. That is talking about Priscilla and Aquila. Let's continue to read there when we get home. Okay. And you will understand that we cannot build without you as a woman. How can the woman build? We can build with faith through good works. We can build with when we provide all our heart. When we come out of all our hearts and generously give. Number three, we can build as women through righteous life if we will avoid what is evil. And again, we can build as women when we are spiritual. <coughs> and not material. When it's in the time of the tabernacle building and we are in the wilderness and you will not look into when I remove my earring how my voice will look like. And you will not be thinking of when I give my necklace how will my beauty be. When women become 
become so spiritual, not material, then the church we can build with them. When we are part of the kingdom, actively and not passive, then you can be part of the building process as a woman. When you as a woman support the home, as a daughter, as a wife, as a mother, and as a grandmother, when you support the home, you are part of the kingdom building. When you support the husband, when you support the children, Yes, it has come to the time for us to rise up, never before us before, to lay our hands also onto the Father. There is nothing right here so beautiful than a woman who is influenced all the time by the Holy Ghost. You as a woman will allow the Holy Spirit always to influence you. There is nothing that can exceed the description into how you look like. And by so the way Peter said, we should not let the only way we can be part of the church kingdom building, church meeting place building, church driving force building, is when you as a woman don't look to your outward adorning. When you look to the inner beauty, when you begin to have that sense of the spirit, you understand why and how you can be part of the building process. May God help us and bless, bless us and bring us onto the knowledge but as the church move on, no one will be left out. And we shall receive equal blessings as he so supports. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.